Devon Woodland, the new president of the National Farmers Organization, announced five regional conventions at mid-March. Our microphones were there at the regional convention at Sauk City, Wisconsin, where not only Woodland spoke, but also the heads of the commodity departments. They told them of the advantages of going into the marketplace as an organized force. And then, near the end of the meeting, President Woodland returned and said this. I have one goal in mind, in my life, and that's to leave something better after passing than I received upon coming into this old mortal sphere. I don't have the divine power to move mountains, but I have the physical strength to climb them and go over them. And you've got the same thing. Now, if you'll do what we ask you to do, we'll assume, assume full responsibility for future of this industry. We accept that. I have a goal to leave something better when I pass than when I came. And today I can't say that. Then Woodland spoke of the next generation and its problems. My youngsters don't have the chance that I had to get into agriculture because I have allowed it to deteriorate. Their ability to incur debt is greater and their ability to repay is less. And we have got to improve conditions while we're here or we have been a failure. You cannot do it individually anymore in this country. You must do it collectively. Those who consider themselves young farmers stand up. <laughs> Remain standing. I want you to stay there a minute. Stay there. There's where NFO's going. If you guys, and I want your wives up with you because you can kid yourself, but you ain't going to kid me. I know who's boss. <laughs> the future of this organization will go in direct relationship where these people take it. This organization will die of hardening of the arteries unless these young people decide in their minds that they are going to pick up the battle and take it on to total victory. And I suggest that every one of you those who consider themselves young and viable and enthusiastic get in the county, the district, and the state, and the national elections. Because herein lies the future of this organization. And a final word about this present season and its demands. Spring is here. It'll only be a few more weeks before most of the farmers in this country is going to go back to the fields with the tractors and the plows. We've got a few weeks that we can drive hard. And you ought to neglect everything from this day until the plow goes in the ground that you possibly can with the exception of the wife and family. And no man will ever reach his full potential if he neglects those two elements. But he can reach his full potential. Devon Woodland had told those attending that he had spent over an hour with the news media and how their questions were warm and friendly. Then he turned to Brunolf Gran, his assistant, who witnessed the news conference, and Gran said this. A couple of the reporters were just absolutely amazed after uh, it was all over with, with uh, surprise on their face and said, this is really simple, isn't it? They said, what's keeping the farmers from, you know, coming in and doing something? This is really simple. So that's the whole thing. They were so amazed that the simplicity of collective bargaining laid out that they could understand it with no problem. And then Gran joined President Woodland in urging participation in the bargaining programs of the NFO as this Wisconsin regional convention was about to adjourn. Today we brought you on the scene coverage of one of the five one-day regional conventions of the National Farmers Organization. Glenn Lelf of the feeder cattle division of the NFO has kept a chart since 1973 of prices and trends of stockers and feeders and fat cattle. He's kept track of the ups and downs, the dates, and carefully correlated them with when NFO contract programs were in the picture. Glenn carefully disclaims NFO being the factor to credit or blame for every peak and valley, but he does talk about the big drop in 1973. Let's join that conversation. They actually peaked out here in at roughly 73 cents during 1973, and a lot of people were looking for a dollar a pound. 
They didn't want to be tied to a contract that was going to have 70, 73, 74, or whatever on it, and they quit contracting at this time. Not only in our organization, but all people basically quit contracting at this they time. They said they're going to bet on just the open market and try to be an individual, huh? Right. Our theater program was probably at an all-time low during this period at this time. And so the slide there on your line graph doesn't look like sliding down the mountain on skis. It looks like a, a cliff that you'd fall off from. It you're, went down so sharply. You're right. We went from that peak of 73 cents in 1973 down to about 25 cents by January of 1974 on wow. feeder cattle. Now, can you describe, Glenn, from your experience in the cattle business, what happens when it's really down there at bankruptcy levels? Then what, what's the psychology of people? This is when people start thinking, perhaps we better get together with our neighbors, think about this contract, and see what we can do for a price again. I mean, this brings it home again, uh, or it has in this case, and as you can see on this graph here, Phil, we started that gradual climb. It's a little more jagged, a few more ups and downs over the period than it was back before we started our NFO program. When did it start going back up to the mountain peak? It started here in April of 1978. We started blocking cattle for forward contract again in Montana. At that time, when we started blocking, the prices were setting in the oh, low 50s, high 50s, low 60s in this range. Okay, now we're right back up at the top of the mountain now with sky-high cattle prices. We've Do you gone. notice the same, same tendency? of people to want to abandon the contract and go back onto the open market? To somewhat extent. However, not nearly like it was in 73. A lot of people went through that ringer only five years ago, and they're apparently still remembering what they've gone through in this period between 1973 and 78. So they did and learn something. You bet. We're having more cattle on contract now than we could ever have hoped for in 74 and 75. What are the lessons? If we will stick together, block these cattle, and sell them on forward contract, you've put a floor price under this market, Phil. This is what you urge them to do? This is what we urge them to do. Any time you can sit down like a businessman with a paper and pencil and figure yourself out a profit, take advantage of it. Don't pass it by. Don't look for that last nickel that's there. Don't take the chance of that valley getting in here like we are just talking about here between 1973 and 1978 again. What kind of contracts would accomplish this? This is a kind of forward contract? Is that what you're Right. Uh, right now, we've got several thousand head already sold of the 79 calf crop that isn't born out of Montana, out of Region 5, which comprises Louisiana, Arkansas, Northeast Texas, Oklahoma, that country down in there. And in the area that I work primarily with, which is the eastern part of the Dakotas and Nebraska, we have many, many cattle on contract of the backgrounded cattle, which are the seven to 800 pound weights that are going on into the feedlot. And we have helped to stabilize this price at this weight range now. A conversation with Glenn Lelf of NFO Feeder Cattle Division. Some lessons to be learned from a chart Glenn has kept since 73. Moral forward contract together to stabilize near the peak. Late in March, the National Farmers Organization held a farm power day. When the collection points all across the country received livestock, grain, dairy commodities, or cash brought in by NFO members for the escrow fund. This fund has been set up under the control of the members to give financial stability to the NFO. I'm Phil Allen for Here's Info. Well, Farm Power Day was not only a success, it also proved the morale is good and the members of the National Farmers Organization have fun. Now here's Don Mack on the scene at Stringtown. What is your name, sir? I'm Dale Whitehill. What county is this? That's Page County, Iowa. I see you brought your son over here. What is your name? Keith Whitehill. How old are you, Keith? Seven. Seven. Would you like to be a farmer and, and follow in your father's footsteps? Sometimes. What do you like about the farm? Oh, uh, doing chores and stuff like that. Well, what would you say that it would take to keep our young people and and people like your son that would like to grow up and stay on the farm. Well, it's going to have to take a price that they can stay in business with the cost that we have. Certainly, we've got to have a 
cost of production plus the profit. And if we don't have that profit, well, we're certainly not going to stay in business. Every business has got to have a profit. And us farmers have got to be more like businessmen, it seems to me like, instead of say, what do you give me for it? Another feature of these Farm Power Day observances is an auction. Here's Marshall Weinbrenner, an NFO member who is also an auctioneer. He's auctioning off a decorative belt buckle. Before the bidding started, here's some good-natured kidding about how exclusive this belt buckle design is. He's supposed to buckle. Okay. That's a special edition for agriculture. They just made a few of them. Oh, they did. About 20,000. <laughs> Here, boys. Did you say 21? Huh? 21 when he goes 21, 21 dollar when you say 21, 21 when he goes 21, that's 20 and he's beautiful. 21 now 2, now 41 now 2, now 41 now 2, now 1. 41 now 2, now 2, when he cut it in 2. Cut it in 2, 2, 2. 41 now 2, 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 Arch Swears bought the limited edition of the agricultural belt buckle, $41. I'm visiting with Richard Weinbrenner from Madison County, Iowa. Why is it important that farmers organize in today's economy? No single group can survive on their own as individuals. It's been demonstrated time and time again that uh, strength lies in organization. Uh, and farmers are no different. With, with the ability of the NFO to, uh, to work prices, uh, we hopefully will be able to establish uh, long-term contracts to help guarantee at least cost production. Richard, is that uh, your father up there doing the auctioneering? Yeah, that's, that's my dad doing it. Let's go see what he's auctioneering. I think he's auctioning off a $100 bill. Let's go see how he's doing. The $100 bill went for $124. I'm visiting with Art Swears now of Lenox, Iowa. How do you feel about the success here? Well, I'm, I'm real pleased. Each of the counties is uh, set for a $10,000 contribution to the escrow account. Uh, I'm sure Adams County is going to go way over the top on that. I don't know. I would say right now we're, we're well over halfway, perhaps got uh, $6,000, $6,500 in the account right now. That's the way Farm Power went at Stringtown, Iowa. I'm Don Mack of NFO News, and that for today is something to think about.